What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna show you seven useful iPhone slash iOS tips, things that you probably didn't know you could do, but you'll probably find useful. And I'm using an iPhone 11 Pro. Let's just get started. The first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is silence unknown callers. I feel like everyone's phone number is on some sort of telemarketing list. If you ever get a phone call from a number that you don't know, here's a way to make sure that doesn't happen. So you go into settings, you scroll down and find phone. And then on the bottom here, there's a setting called silence unknown callers. And what it does is any number that's not in your contacts, your phone won't even ring. It'll just silence them and basically send them to voicemail and then show up in your missed calls list. This is a great thing if you get a lot of spam calls, robo callers, or just calls from people you don't know. Up next is significant locations and how to turn this feature off. I feel like every couple of months this goes viral on Twitter and people freak out, but in case you didn't know, go into settings, scroll down to privacy, and watch how buried slash hidden this is. You go to location services, then you scroll all the way down to system services, and then scroll down, and when you see significant locations, tap that. It'll scan your face using Face ID, and now you can see all of the kind of frequent locations. Your phone knows exactly where you go and how long you spend there, which is kind of freaky, but also makes sense because your phone has GPS and other various sensors. But if you wanna turn this off, there's a toggle right up top and you could just turn it off. But I've actually looked at my frequent locations and right here where it says home, this is the studio. I don't live in the studio, but it thinks I live here. Uh, so that's not exactly accurate. And the times that I spend here and how long it takes me to get here are also often incorrect. This might freak you out understandably, but Apple right here says significant locations are end-to-end -end encrypted and cannot be read by Apple. So there you have it. Up next, I'm gonna show you how to limit ad tracking. So go into settings, scroll down to privacy, scroll down to advertising, it should be the last thing there. And then there's a toggle to limit ad tracking. So if you don't want Apple to serve you personalized recommendations in the App Store or in Apple News, you can turn this off and it will stop doing that. I have mine turned off because when I browse the App Store, I want to browse freely. I don't want Apple to tell me what it thinks that I do or do not like. Up next, reachability. So on the older iPhones, you were able to double click or triple click the home button and it would shift the operating system down anywhere so you can reach the top easily. That's why it's called reachability. But on newer iPhones that don't have a home button, it's a simple swipe. Basically, if you're on the home screen, it's a simple swipe down from the dock. Or if you're in an app, it's basically just like a simple swipe down from right about there. And it's pretty useful if you don't have oversized hands. Here's how to turn it on. Hop into settings, go down to accessibility, and under physical and motor, tap touch, and then turn on reachability. Swipe down on the bottom edge of the screen to bring the top into reach. Highly recommend you turn this on and now you know how to use it. All right, up next is how to change the aspect ratio of your photos before you take your photos. So by default, iPhone photos shoot at a four by three aspect ratio, but when you're in the camera, if you simply swipe up, you can change the aspect ratio of your photos to square, four by three, or 16 by nine. So if you shoot a lot of Instagram stories, but you want them to be higher quality and you're shooting in the iOS camera, now you can shoot them in 16 by nine and they look great on Instagram stories, no cropping necessary. And up here in this swipe up menu is where you can turn on and off live photos. You also have your self timer there, which is nice. And then you have all of the filters if you're into that sort of thing. And then when you're done, you just swipe down and it goes away. Okay, up next is a trick for live photos. Did you know that after you've taken your live photo, you can change the live photo effect? After you've taken a live photo, you don't tap edit. You actually just swipe up on the photo and then you'll see effects. There's the regular live setting, there's the loop, there's bounce, 
and then long exposure. I recommend experimenting with these. They're fun to play around with, but specifically the long exposure one. Try taking a photo at night and use a long exposure and see what happens. Okay, and last but not least, if you're on the newest version of iOS or you have a new iPhone and you've wondered what happened to burst photos, it's actually pretty simple to shoot burst photos, but if you don't know, it would be really hard to figure this out. So just as an FYI, if you're in the iOS camera and you press and hold on the shutter, it'll start recording video and then you can actually drag it to the right to lock it and then you're taking video. But if you drag the shutter to the left, you don't press on the shutter and then drag left. You you just drag the shutter to the left. That is how you shoot burst photos now. Who knew? So there you have it, seven things you might not have known you can do on your iPhone in the newest version of iOS. Leave me a comment, let me know which one surprised you the most. Personally, I had to look up how to do the live photos thing because it's not really that obvious. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you learned something. And if you're new around here, my name is Sam Sheffer and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.